Welcome back to part two of my Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Republic of Gotland Let's Play. I am Arumba, and uh, where we last stopped off, I had just started a trade post in, I believe it was here. Let's check. Yes, trade post halfway complete. And onwards, let's, let's conquer the world. So let's talk strategy here. So the main thing about republics that you need to to work on is uh, relations with the surrounding counties um, and the liege that controls them. Not the necessarily the county, like the count of that place. Like for instance, I'm going to pause for a second. Let's just say I wanted to expand my influence over here to Satukan Satakunta. And some of these words are tough. If I wanted to expand there, the cost to build the trade post, you can see here, has personal wealth of at least 263 gold. So in order to build that trade post, I'm going to have to pay an extra amount because of two things. First off, I have a distance penalty from the closest held republic county or city. Um, and then also, he doesn't like me. You can see there it says, High Chief... Ihala the first opinion of you plus 2.4 percent so if we go and we look at his opinion it's a negative problem is that he is pagan so um, he's gonna hate me no matter what he thinks I'm an infidel and likewise I think he's an infidel so we'll both have negative opinions of each other the reason it's important to try to play as a diplomacy based or stewardship based character is that it's all about money and the less expensive it is to build trade posts, the more you can kind of abuse the game again, uh, abuse the game mechanics. The other factor is making sure that the, within the household, if I look within our republic, I can see the actual areas of the five patrician families. Um, I'm in blue, Afstrenkirka, how are you pronounce it, and. Um, the more connected my trade zone is, the higher the overall cumulative benefit is to the trade zone value. If I were to have two or three or ten separate trade zones, that's good, but not as good as having one larger connected trade zone with a larger multiplier. My experience has shown me now that the, the cap for a trade zone seems to be around um, an increase of about 98, 99% to the trade post income and about 45, 50% or so for cities. We'll see if we can capture that soon. Um, just kind of an aside, I know I said in the last video this wouldn't be educational, but I'm very numbers based and I do like to try to like, at least explain what I'm trying to do here. So I gotta keep it at least somewhat informational. Let's continue. I really don't care very much about, about what this guy does. In fact, it's not gonna be long before we um, go ahead and kick him out of the program. I'm going to be, we're definitely going to play independent republic, um, but after we've built all the trade posts around this guy. And yeah, it looks like that modifier wore off. So we're not going to want to build the next trade post quite yet. I do feel like the last video um, I was talking a little bit fast, um, under a little bit of, I wouldn't say particularly um, really the issue I was, I was looking at is that it's not I have I can upload videos that are longer than 15 minutes but I want to keep them about the same length and um, the issue I'm actually running into is more of a matter of hard drive space in order to record these videos uh, with enough quality so you can actually read what's happening it's got to be in 1080p and the last file using fraps was probably about I'd say 40 gigabytes for a 15-minute video, which is a little bit more than I expected, but we'll be able to manage. Trade post is complete, so now, great example, so now we can look and we see that the, uh, the trade zone value, the cumulative value of all holdings in this trade zone increases the value of trade posts and cities in this trade zone. So the value is 66 gold, 
and if we wanted to we could look within this trade zone and see um, you know where that trade zone value comes there might be an easier way to look it up but the way you could quickly do it is that you got 13 plus 11 and then if we look at the city within this county that's going to be another 12 and then the city within my county which is 17 so 17 and 12 is 29 plus another 44 or excuse me 24 gets us to the uh, roughly around this value somewhere in there um, and the multipliers work out but so that is good this early on um, I wish I had higher higher intrigue no trade posts that we can plot to steal because we don't have anything next to them. It's got to be directly adjacent. So we'll probably expand here next because it does have a city and it's adjacent to the um, Goldsmeld family. Goldsmeld. One of the higher level people. You can also see which ones they have here. One of the things that's kind of neat that um, wasn't in Crusader's King, Crusader Kings earlier was the ability to directly improve your character's stats with buildings. They added this in uh, just for patricians. These buildings um, at the lower levels don't do much other than your traditional building does. More troops, more money, more whatever, more levy. Um, and I don't even think any of these will show on the first rank, but for instance, the um, Fortified Vault uh, level 2 will give you plus 1 intrigue and there's one for plus stewardship plus diplomacy and that's pretty neat he is leading troops which I believe makes it more difficult to to get the improve, improved diplomacy I think he actually has to be in the county for that to work so I'm perfectly content to just stockpile some money and um, I think the immediate impulse is to just buy as quickly as you can, but it is important to have some money on hand um, for a couple reasons. First off, you can hire mercenaries, but second off, patricians actually benefit from, um, if you look at the bottom here, where prestige is increasing by 0.83 per month. Um, and you can see the patrician treasury is uh, plus 0 0.078. It's, it works out, it's like five uh, thousandths of the amount of gold that you have. So having an extra 200 gold means that you're going to gain about 0.1 um, prestige per month, which, no, excuse me, I did my math wrong. One prestige per month, which would be 12 per year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but... Um, it really is important. Every hunter prestige that you get gives you plus one relations with everyone. So earlier I was talking about how you want to have good relations so you can buy more trade posts. Well, it kind of works in your favor. So it's okay to wait. I wouldn't mind stacking up even if we got up to two or three, four hundred gold. And then we get a improved diplomacy um, and then build them all at once. Then you end up coming out ahead, I think. Looks like our liege is now at peace, which is good. I like a... Why are you leading troops again? What is your problem, bro? Oh, okay. Rebels. You can't really see what he's doing inside this combat because we're not directly part of the war. Uh, and it's actually just rebels, but he's busy. troops in fast Marland. Where are you? And why am I there too? Oh, you're just commanding your levy? Your retinue? Silly dude. Go home. Go home so that I can make you like me. Now, my experience as well with with the republics is that it's possible that I might lose the first election. If I get a, you know, if my liege, like an idiot, draws me to some war despite my low 
martial ability and gets me killed, then my my heir is not going to win. I've only ever really lost the election once. That's in the very beginning when you don't have a lot of power or control. After you've had 20, 30 years to play the game, um, as a player at least, I don't think it's really possible to lose the election because you can just rig it. I mean, you can you can literally buy the election. At most, it's going to cost five to seven hundred gold, and that's nothing. You shall see. You'll, you'll see. It won't take us very long. A group of hedge knights have come to visit Gotland. Magnus has met with them and asked for my reply. Spend money to gain prestige. Very little prestige at that. Or refuse the Maxis. Well, we do not want a relationship. And we want money, but... I don't know, I, I'm usually pretty generous in the events. Goodness gracious, you're at war again. Yes, yes, piety. Yes, three gold. It doesn't matter, we make 70 a year. Actually, we make more than that. But, some family dues. What we really need is for you to like us more. Okay, so because he is greedy, you get an incredibly good benefit to a gift. So this is I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna probably wrap the video up on this topic here. We'll see how much longer it takes. I know not really very much time has passed in the game, but I'm gonna try to slow it down a little bit. Um, despite the short episodes, it's all gonna be bundled into a, uh, a playlist. So if you have time, you can just watch them back to back. And if not, I do kind of like the idea of a 10 to 15, maybe 20 minute video, just so it's bite-sized manageable. Later on, once, um, you know, maybe if I decide to get a larger hard drive, I might do the two hour videos, we'll see. But um, I want to explain this part. So here's the, the rationale. Right now, because his relations is at nearly zero, I mean 15 is closer to zero than it is to capped at 100. Um, the cost to build a trade port is generally, it's 150 gold, Distance from the, the nearest held Republic City is a factor. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not even there if you have the city that the county's in. Um, but you can see that 15, positive 15 relations only gives me a 6% discount. And if this guy is planning on being here for a while, my liege, which he probably will, he's only 21, um, the relations benefit from buying, gifting him, would essentially take him to almost 100, which cuts the cost of purchasing a port by a huge amount. It might slow me down in the short term, but in the long term, if I can buy probably, probably even just two at that discounted price, I'd come out ahead. So what I'm going to hope for is a, uh, if my Chancellor can do his job and make this guy like me better, and if he'll stop warring and stay where he belongs, I believe, again, I believe the Chancellor can only improve relations with him if he's in the county, and I can't chase him around like I could, for instance, take that off and then say, okay, there's my liege, and go to him, and okay, well, he is there, but he's leading troops there. Is he going to stay there? Eh, we'll see. But you could put your, your Chancellor up here, um, if that's where he was, but then... So, we'll see. Let's play through a little bit longer and then uh, I'll wrap it up. Actually, I plan on releasing one video tonight, but I'm just really excited to play. I hope you share my excitement. Uh, I might as well do this. Hey, there we go. See? Let me, let me test this. Are you Are you currently there? Yeah, he's reigning there, so we get it. Our Chancellor has a 32% chance per year, so... That's going to help a lot, so now we can afford that. Mm. Okay, so the blue counties indicate where the family things are. I can see the actual ones there, but... I'm going to take this one next.
because um, it's within our zone and it's going to allow me to fabricate a claim on the enemy um, of Guldsmeld. Once ours is finished, we will be able to plot against him and ha ideally we'll get an extra, which will increase the value of our trade zone. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to spend some money in September here on another Grand Hunt because I really like getting that Diligent trait. And that would also give us the extra 100 prestige from our ambition. Actually, yeah. If we get our ambition, if we get our martialness, our martial ability to 8, we get an extra 100 prestige, which is a 1 plus 1 relations bonus with everyone on the entire planet. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's see if we can get that diligent trait. Even ambitious would be wonderful. Actually, ambitious would be bad because then we'd have other traits above. There we go, right there. Bam! That's what I wanted. The hounds were more alert this morning than I've ever seen before. Uh, something stupendous must be awaiting for us. Yes, it's free, free perks. Don't get hurt. Good. So now we've got the diligent trait. Hey, this is fantastic. All of a sudden... Wait, it, whoa, whoa. Oh no, I picked the wrong one. Become Marshall. I don't want to have Marshall. I wanted to improve my... That's a silly mistake. Well, we'll just have to do it with stewardship. Oops. Believe it or not, it's harder to uh, harder to do well when you are playing um, and trying to talk the whole time. <laughs> so, well, either way, you've seen an easy way to, to get the diligent trait. That helps out tremendously. And I believe other characters, um, there's some, some relations benefits. Some of them might actually like you better just because you are diligent. Yes, yeah, so you're at their liege is diligent. So that makes them like you more. It's a very good trait. It's very inexpensive. Um, the only other benefit I could get from this Grand Hunt is a little bit more prestige um, every time you do it. And I could get ambitious, but that's pretty rare. You're actually far more likely, I think, to just get hurt. So I'm not going to do it. Um, I think that's probably a pretty good place to wrap it up. Um, this trade post will be done next episode, and we will then plot to steal Schmaland from the Goldsmelt. So, we'll see you next time. Hopefully you enjoy the video, and look forward to seeing you next round. Thanks.